Welcome to the Temple of Hip Hop. I am the acronologist G. Simone. The Temple of Hip Hop is a hip hop preservation ministry, archive, school, and society that approaches hip hop as a divinely inspired global culture of peace and prosperity. As you know, Hip Hop Appreciation Week is every third week in May, and guess what? Tomorrow is Hip Hop Appreciation Week. It begins tomorrow, May 16th to May 22nd, 2022. Our theme this year is Breaking, and as we have learned, beyond its entertainment value, Breaking is a human skill. Breaking is our official cultural dance, and it requires no electricity or power source to be produced or expressed. Like beatboxing and emceeing, Breaking is a healthy human skill. It does not matter what breaking is in the entertainment industry or what, it may, or what you may feel about a certain b-boy or a b-girl. Breaking is simply a healthy human skill. Breaking or dancing gets our heart pumping at 120 beats per minute. Can you imagine that? Breaking or dancing? So you can just wake up in the morning and just start breaking or start dancing and it is going to get your heart rate up to 120 beats per minute. So do this three times a week and it will increase your lifespan by years. So get your body moving again. We have an exciting week ahead. Being that we are working with the days of the week this week, we are going to go back a little bit and see if we remember the seven full day plan. Do any of you remember the seven full day plan? We had this years ago when the temple first started and we incorporated it into some of the things we were doing. But this week we're gonna do something special. So let me tell you a little bit about the seven full day plan. The seven full day plan is a daily affirmational system designed to keep you aligned with your spirit. Words do matter. Speak to your day. And as we learned in the seventh overstanding of the gospel of hip hop, page 352, track 94 to 97, we'll get a better understanding. So let me get my gospel so that we can read those tracks and understand more. Page 352, track 94. You now see that when the sun rises and creates a new day, that everyone has a different experience in that same day according to their own perception. For if the concept of a day truly existed outside of yourself, as most people believe, Everyone would, have the everyone would have the experience that day wanted them to have. Let me say that again. Everyone would have the experience that day wanted it to have. Everyone would have the same experience in a day. And in many ways, people do share the same daily experiences. There is, this is on a side note. This is not in the gospel, but... We all have to go to the bathroom, we all have to eat, we all wake up. These are the same experiences that most of us experience every day. The list goes on with that. But however, track 95, the truth is that you do not live within the day. The very reality of the day lives within you. And that's what the seven full day plan is all about. Filling you up with words and affirmations that you can take in the week and add to the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, themes that we've been living by forever. So let me go back again to track 95 where it says, however, the truth is that you do not live within the day. The very reality of the day lives within you. So any interpretation you have of your day is undoubtedly true for you as well as those who take part in your day. Wake up, hip hopper. You are your day. Speak to the intelligence of your day. Tell it what you want, tell it what you want and how you would like it to present itself to you. And accept an answer. And accept and expect an answer. I'm sorry about that. And expect an answer. With an awareness of your seventh sense, you become the very day itself. Everything that goes on in your day first goes on in you. Therefore, when you bring peace to yourself through the habits of your divine performances, you are actually speaking the secret language of peace to the intelligence of your day. So in summary, you know, this says you are the power of your day. The day is not the power of you. So don't just call it Monday. Don't just call it Tuesday. Don't just call it Wednesday. Give it a title that empowers and moves you forward. I'm going to go back to my notes here on what we have. The seven full day plan speaks to this awareness that we just spoke about from the gospel. 
right here. It speaks to the awareness of what we're doing. What you call your day is how your day is going to manifest for you. What you call your week is how your week is going to manifest for you. The seven full day plan is a calling to your fullness every day of the week where full is defined as full of our having full of or having a quantity that would fill something full is enough and plentiful. So remember when you're full, that's enough and it's plentiful. So this is what we want to do. We want to fill you up with some words that you can use along with the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday that will fill your spirit. So it is to our advantage to fill our spirit with meaning and mercy on Monday. Give meaning to your day. Give meaning to your life. Have mercy on Monday. Somebody may need that grace from you. Give it to them. That's what we can also do on Monday. Truth and trust on Tuesday. Be truthful. Not that you're not truthful on Monday or any other day of the week, but be, go, go hard on trying to be truthful in what you do within your day on Tuesday and trust as much as you can in, in life itself. So we want to do some truth and trust on Tuesday and we want to bring meaning and mercy on Monday. Now Wednesday is about will and wealth. Will is the power that you have within. So use your will to will yourself to do something that maybe you've never done before, experience something you've never experienced before. Go to a restaurant or, you know, hike, do something that your will would like you to do. And wealth. We talk about health, love, awareness, and wealth, and it's important for your wealth to well up within you. So we want you prosperous and have, to have abundance. So that's on our Wednesday. Thanks and thoughts on Thursday. We're going to watch our thoughts on Thursday and we're going to give thanks on Thursday because it's important that we find a day in the week that we say, you know what? Thank you. Thank you, family. Thank you, friends. Thank you, universe. Thank you, God, whoever you thank. Be thankful on Thursday and make sure your thoughts are positive. On Friday, we're going to fill ourselves with faith and be fruitful. Fruitful. That's a good word. Fruit is good and being fruitful is good and having abundance and having faith and hope and, and understanding that even though things don't look like they want, you want them to look now, with your faith and your hope, you know, you can get to that and you can get to the other side of things. On Saturday, we want to be filled with skill and success. We want to be successful and success is about moving forward. Success is about if you fall down, get back up and keep going. So we want you to be successful and use your skills on Saturday. Saturdays are busy days for moms and dads and, and just people, even if you don't have children. But with moms, you got laundry, you got pickup to do. Husbands sometimes do the, do the garden or do cleaning up the garage. So make sure you use your skill on Saturday to something that's going to propel you through the week to get you through. Also on Sunday, we want to fill our souls with the good word like we do every Sunday here, filling you with the gospel and filling ourselves with it. And also be sourceful on Sunday. Um, sourcefulness is very good because sometimes some people need you for things and you're like, hey, I could be a good resource for that. So I can come to you and I can add my skill and be sourceful to you. So again, let's go over the list. Meaning and mercy on Monday. Truth and trust on Tuesday. Your will and your wealthfulness on Wednesday. Thanks and thoughts on Thursday, faith and fruit on Friday, skill and success on Saturday, soul and source on Sunday. Those interested in, these, in this affirmational system can connect with me during the week. I'll have a one sheet on this that I can give to you. Before I close, I'd like to go back to the gospel, page 388, track 23 to 29. That's page 388, track 23 to 29. During Hip Hop Appreciation Week, artists can, be, artists can be asked to give sound advice on what you've learned about your life. I'm sorry, let me read that again. During Hip Hop Appreciation Week, artists can be asked to give sound advice on what they've learned about life and living hip hop. Schools of all sorts can be encouraged to discuss hip hop academically and critically. Radio DJs can be encouraged to upgrade their play of conscious rap music over the airways. That is so important and we hope that the radio stations honor this and they do feed the people with fruit, with wealth, 
with fruitful things, with things that can move them forward. So we hope that will change on the airways as we go forward. During Hip Hop Appreciation Week, the hip hop community is encouraged to give the next person the right of way. We're all, people that drive, there are always people cutting you off, there are always people blowing their horn. Sometimes you just have to let people go ahead of you, let them go around you so that they could be in peace and you as well could be in peace. So again, we want to make sure that during Hip Hop Appreciation Week, we, we encourage ourselves to let people go ahead of us, go around us, so that we can all be in peace while we are driving. Road rage is crazy in some states, and we don't want that for any of you. So again, during Hip Hop Appreciation Week, the hip hop community is encouraged to give the next person the right of way. Please, let's do that on the road this week. Allow people to pass you. Do not block a person's forward movement. This is not good whether you're in a car or whether you're just in a home. Uh, this is not good. We want people to move forward and we want to move forward. Donate your skill or profession to someone who cannot afford it. If you can do something for someone this week and you have a skill and someone can't afford it, go ahead and do that. That's charity. That's in the gospel as well. We want it. We want to be charitable people. We want to be helpful to people we know and we don't know. That's the way to go. At the supermarket, give your change to the person behind you in line. That is fun sometimes because when I do that in the grocery store, people are just excited. If it's just $3 or $2, I'm like, thank you so much. And you'll get something out of it and so will they. It's just a good gesture. Also, be quick to compliment and slow to criticize. People are quick to criticize and tell you this and tell you that and talk about other people. Try to direct people to not gossip. Guide our speech so individuals prosper. Do not give out someone's secret information publicly. So that's the acronym for gossip. I just threw that in. That's not in the gospel, but it'll probably be in the second edition. But right now, be quick to compliment and slow to criticize. Be ready also to forgive and move on so important lumo let us move on that's an acronym from l u m o lumo let us move on sometimes we just have to forgive and move on because we will stay in something in some unforgiveness and it will eat us up and that goes inside of you that goes back to the seven full day plan you don't want to be a full of unforgiveness you don't want to be full of unforgiveness and full of hate and full of jealousy and full of bitterness you do not want to be full of that because that is full of I won't say it, but you know what it is. Don't be full of that. Be full of love and full of appreciation and full of thanks. And these are the things we should be full of. So in closing on this part, again, be quick to compliment and slow to criticize. Be ready also to forgive and move on. And last but not least, on track 28, give 10% of your salary to your child's teacher. I mean, teachers do not make what they should be making in this time that we are living in but we can support the teachers because the teachers are supporting our, our children. They're, they're taking their time to wake up every day and teach the children so that they can make better choices in life. So it's important for us to support the teachers and not always wanna go up on parent teacher night ready to attack the teacher for something. We should try to communicate better with the teachers so that they can communicate better with us and then communicate better with the students and then the students graduate and go out to the world and they're better people. So thank you again. Happy, happy Hip Hop Appreciation Week to everyone. And before the teacher comes on, we are going to have a quick break. So I wish you all health, love, awareness, and wealth. See you in New York for Hip Hop Appreciation Week. Peace. It's Hip Hop Appreciation Week, y'all. Every third week in May. Hip Hop Appreciation Week. We appreciate hip hop. I know we all say we down with the culture. I know we all getting money in the culture. I know we getting famous in the culture. But when do we sit back and appreciate the source of our well-being? It's Hip Hop Appreciation Week. May 16th to the 22nd, 2022. You get a chance to express hip hop or your appreciation for it. Yes, indeed. Welcome to the Temple of Hip Hop. I am KRS-One. Big up to G. Simone for that wonderful introduction as well. And we're going to see Simone throughout the week, throughout Hip Hop Appreciation Week, for everyone coming to Hip Hop Appreciation Week as well. 
Uh, shout out to you. Big up to everybody that is in the sound of my voice right now. This is a wonderful time we're in. Tomorrow is Hip Hop Appreciation Week. And as Pascal uh, pointed out, Pascal One pointed out last week, there's going to be a lunar eclipse, um, uh, I think, t uh, today or tomorrow. Um, uh, there's going to be a lunar eclipse happening. You should be on the lookout for that. The universe is with us. We're in alignment with the celestial bodies of the universe. This is a wonderful time for us. It's, it's Hip Hop Appreciation Week, May 16th to the 22nd, 2022. This is a wonderful time for hip-hop because this is a moment where we appreciate hip-hop itself. Not necessarily ourselves in it, but we appreciate hip-hop for what it is. And so I'm going to talk to you today, um, uh, a special read today. Um, normally in, in these times, uh, you know, when we get together like this, we get together like this about 12 o'clock Eastern time uh, uh, here in the United States, and we read the gospel of hip-hop. But what we're doing is we're reading, what we're in is the middle of a section called the movement. Uh, uh, the movement. And we're going slow with that because there's really good lessons and teachable moments in that reading. But because we are um, dealing now with Hip Hop Appreciation Week, I want to go through a special read with you uh, right now. This is for hip hop's teachers. This is about the teaching of hip hop. And, 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 well, before I get into that as, as, as well, I'll, I'll get back to that in a minute. That's our special read for today uh, because we are, we are actually uh, studying. The reason we're studying the gospel of hip-hop, reading through it, uh, is not just for our own perfection, our own self-perfection, even our own knowledge of the gospel and knowledge of hip-hop, but... We are reading the gospel of hip-hop because some of us are going to be teaching it. And the idea of teaching the gospel of hip-hop uh, demands a certain uh, skill, uh, demands a certain skill. And right now, not too many people really have that skill. And it's a, it's a shame because people are, you know, teaching, you know, you know they got master classes, they got workshops, universities are teaching hip hop and so on, but no one really has the, uh, ad, ad, the accreditation, the skill, the know-how to really teach the culture. And that's what we're really doing here. We're building our teachers week by week by reading the formation of the culture itself. And you're reading about the formation of the culture itself from the architect of the culture itself. Yes, I and others, most of whom was at the United Nations with us, are the architects of hip hop's culture, period. And if you're not learning from an architect of the culture, somebody who actually invested time and money into the making of hip hop as culture, then as a teacher, your teachings are not going to be authentic. You're going to constantly struggle for authenticity and authority because you didn't go to the original source. And, and fortunately, not unfortunately, but fortunately, the original source is right here. This is where hip hop is protected as well because no other corporation or university or some other learning institution could say that they originated the hip hop teaching methodology or they originated the idea of teaching hip hop as a subject. They did not. KRS-One is the first one to approach hip hop as a teachable subject and then went about teaching it in over 500 universities around the world and, and mostly in the United States. We established this or what we are doing right now. This is not bragging, this is not some self-aggrandizement as well. The reason for saying this first is for the protection of hip hop. If I don't proclaim the truth, our culture suffers. The truth and the fact is, KRS-One is hip hop's first master teacher, master teacher. I've been given that title from hip hop's founders. M most of hip-hop's founders. This is how I am addressed. I also gained my title over time. I made errors. I had trials. Uh, I got checked, <laughs> uh, corrected, uh, and made some profound statements and discoveries as well. 
All of that goes into the teaching. A culture's teacher, or should I say this, a culture's, uh, a culture knows its teacher. A culture's first teacher does not have to be introduced. A culture's first teacher is known by the culture already. And, and this is what makes the office of teacher important to the culture. The culture made the office of teacher. No institution made the office. Circumstances, situations, random events, people, this, that. these situations that are outside of human planning is what makes cultural offices, which this makes the office. So the office of teacher in a culture is created by the culture, thus the temple of hip hop, KRS-One. And thus yourself as members of the temple or teachers of hip hop. Um, before we start, I just want to uh, real quick uh, go over the week uh, uh, with you as well. Um, really quickly, uh, you, most of you, those who are, are attending the, the week, you already have this information as well. I'm putting this information into record, uh, uh, in, in, into record, um, because our, you know, our, um, our itinerary uh, advances and changes over time. So this is what we got for this week. Each week, you know, we've been dealing with this. So this is what we got this week. So May 15th uh, is Sunday. We have a special pre-hip-hop uh, 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 appreciation week online lecture given by the teacher KRS-One. That's what I'm about to do right now. May 16th, Monday, temple members arriving all day. Uh, I'll be receiving temple members all day as you arrive in. You'll be going to uh, the hotel uh, that, that, that we have there. We're, we're staying in New Jersey. You know the hotel. You have your thing. Um, five o'clock, uh, from five to seven, we're going to start with a wine tasting, red wine tasting, Chardon um, Cabernet Sauvignons, uh, uh, Merlots, um, maybe even some sangrias <laughs> uh, as well. But we start with a wine tasting. We're looking to have Raekwon's uh, a beverage a wine, E40, uh, Snoop uh, as, 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 as well, and we're going to taste these wines, as well, among other wines as, as well. That's from 5 to 7, and that's when we all come in. Something to relax with, talk, get to know each other, uh, and also, of course meet the teacher. That goes into a 7 to 10 p.m. dinner. So you got 5 to 7 is just wine tasting, everybody coming in. Then you got 7 to 10 is uh, the actual dinner. Um, as we meet E greet <laughs> go through that. I'm gonna say a few words as well uh, about the Temple of Hip Hop, our forward movement, some of our visions. We have new projects coming up, uh, this kind of thing. I'll, I'll I'll be talking about that. And also, uh, just so you know, for our investors, you know, we're still looking at having. This is now May 17th, Tuesday. We're not yet confirmed for the investors meeting at the temple, the potential temple of hip hop location at 55 Ludlow uh, in Newark, New Jersey uh, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. We're not confirmed on that uh, 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 in that case. And if that is the case <clears throat> where for some reason we can't get into that uh, building, we'll just skip that uh, uh, and move on down to the true hip hop certification ceremony at the Shield of Oliver Conference Center. That is confirmed. Uh, that starts at 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, and um, um, uh, like I said, that is confirmed, and we'll have a great time there as well. That's your confirmation, your true hip hop confirmation. Those that are coming will get theirs early. 5 to 11, we're looking to do a recording session. We're going to do it right there in, in, in the, um, we, have, we have a portable studio. I'm going to lay my verse, some others lay their verses as well. 5 to 11, we'll do it probably at the hotel. Uh, May 18th, Wednesday, uh, we also have a video shoot. Well, let, let, me, let, me, let, let me start off with this. You, we talked about May 17th, uh, the recording session, 5 to 11. So the next day, uh, we're gonna do. We're gonna try to shoot the video the next day from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. I, I just wanted to put that in because they go together. But on May 18th uh, at 12 noon to 2 p.m., um, 
uh, I'll be taking an interview with the BBC. Uh, they're doing a new thing. Um, as a matter of fact, Chuck D is actually executive producer. The BBC and, the, and PBS is doing a new uh, docu-series on hip-hop and its political views, its cultural views uh, on, on, in that sense. I'll be doing an interview from 12 to 2, uh, to, uh, um, uh, from noon to 2 p.m. Uh, there. Um, it's a private session. I'm just letting you know that that's some of the press that I'll be taking during the week. Um, three, uh, three to three p.m. to five p.m. Uh, uh, I'm also doing a, a a a video shoot with DJ Drama. Shout out to DJ Drama. Big up to you, G. Uh, DJ Drama. Um, they just came out with a record. They sampled my voice at the beginning of the record. We will be here forever. Uh, so I will be there saying that, and then hanging out with Fabulous and Jim Jones and and others uh, that are part of this video as well. Uh, so on. I'm just going to go hang out and see my crew and see what's going on. Um, May 19th, Thursday, uh, it starts off with fasting, meditation, uh, and, and, and hip-hop documentaries, but we might have a special presentation by G. Simone um, uh, on, on that. I'd like her to do an acronology uh, uh, presentation during that time, but if that can't happen, and reason being because we're busy, you know, Simone is working the, these weeks with us as well behind the scenes as well. So if that if she if we can't do that, then it is just fasting, meditation as we planned with hip hop documentaries in the conference room. But <clears throat> you really want this acronology piece uh, that we're going to try to really uh, get get done. Uh, that's all the way from morning to 7 p.m. at night. It's an all-day situation. Um, uh, and wait, wait, wait. Let me back up. Sorry. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me back up. Um, it's a morning. It's not all day. Uh, that's all news, a morning to 7. It's not that. Um, the fasting and meditation is all day. Let me be clear with you. The fasting and meditation is all day. But the uh, morning, we may uh, have, just before we get to the construction site, G. Simone may do something in the morning on that acronology. We'll see if we can do it because we are uh, extremely busy during the week, as you could see. But then we go to the Universal Hip Hop Museum construction site walkthrough, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., uh, uh, so on. We'll go take that in, see and see what that is. It's actually not even 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. anymore. It's probably going to be even later than that because they're having something. They call it a topping off ceremony at the place when we, the day we're getting there. They're having a topping off ceremony. I don't even know what that is. I'm going to go and learn uh, what, what that is as well. Um, uh, but uh, we'll be there. Uh, actually for that and they could walk us through and so on you know please don't wear sandals uh this is a construction site have some hard shoes boots i got helmet um work uh work ha helmets work hats hard hats uh uh for for our members as well to get there uh and so on uh, i may even autograph some of our hard hats if possible so you can have a memorable something else memorable to go back with uh, uh, as, as, as well, but that's the Universal Hip Hop Museum construction site walkthrough. Uh, we may be there till about six o'clock at night. Um, but then at seven o'clock, we have dinner again. Uh, and that dinner is with myself, but we'll be flanked uh, asking questions to DJ Hollywood, uh, DJ Baron, and DJ Breakout, who are known as Brothers Disco, uh, DJ Tony Tone from the Cold Crush Brothers and Grand Wizard Theodore, uh, Grandmaster Flash's student and protege that is uh, credited as being the father of Scratch, of the Scratch. He'll talk up his legacy. All of them will talk up their legacies uh, there while we eat and, and uh, uh, take in that knowledge. Um, that's from 7 to 10 p.m. That's on Thursday. Friday, uh, we are um, over at Essex County College. We're uh, <clears throat> at the Essex County College where we're going to be talking about the history of break-in and the Latino influences on the evolution of hip hop as culture. It's gonna be a fantastic lecture. Uh, we have Deuce Martinez, scholar, uh, he's gonna be talking, and Pop Master Fables, scholar, uh, Rocksteady, Zulu, and of course his own b-boy extraordinaire, he's gonna be talking as well. He was with me at Versus as well, you might have seen him at, at Versus. Um, Pop Master Fables, uh, we, 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 we may do this, we don't have our time set yet, uh, but it's, you could suggest from two to six in the from two in the afternoon to about six in the evening, somewhere around there. 
uh, uh, we will be at Essex County College, and that's going to be a wonderful lecture. We're going to be talking that up real quick. Um, uh, so May uh, twenty uh, May twenty first is the Saturday. Simone is still doing the meaning and purpose of crystals, but if we didn't get to do the acronology, we'll probably throw the acronology a piece on acronology there as well. We want to get that into the record and get that history lesson taught as well. And plus, you want to walk away with affirmations, crystals. It's going to be wonderful. You don't want to miss that. So Simone is going to be talking possibly acronology on that day, most likely. And then the crystals, the meaning of crystals, uh, the purpose of crystals, what crystals mean, how they, they, they um, affect you intellectually, mentally, even maybe even physically. Uh, so you want to get there. May uh, 22nd is, is, is our done day. Uh, um, uh, that's it. And um, what's on the schedule is, it says broadcast of special online Hip Hop Appreciation Week freestyle cypher performance featuring KRS-One. Now, during this week, d d during this time, matter of fact, I will say this. Right now, I'm going to get up right now and I'm going to go and record. I'm going to meet Sun One and some students right now over at the studio. Uh, right now, Simone and I are going to dash over there, and um, it's not even far from here. I'm going to run over there, and I'm just going to blaze the mic. I'm just going to blaze the mic out in honor of Hip Hop Appreciation Week. Raw lyrics, you know what it is. Uh, so I'm just going to blaze the mic um, uh, and, and do that. So that broadcast will be happening during the week, at the week. You know, it's going to be, we'll probably uh, release it, like, for, for instance, you're going to get a sneak peek of this right now, okay? You're going to get a sneak peek because I'm going to take this contraption with me. We're going to go over to this place right now, and you're going to get a sneak peek of me on the mic blazing it. Uh, and that's what it is. Um, and that's going to happen after our read today. So stay tuned. After the read uh, today, um, I'm just going to dash over to the studio, and we'll take it from there. But you and you're getting this first. You're seeing it first. Everyone else will get, you know, they'll get to see it. I guess the next day, Monday, we might put it up Monday or like here may broadcast at the end of the week. We'll probably put it up Monday the next day, like, you know, tomorrow to, to start the week. We'll probably just put it up tomorrow to start the week. Um, but but you're getting it now. Uh, those that are on this call, uh, you'll be with me over at the studio um, spitting the roll. Um, and so, okay, that is Hip Hop Appreciation Week. And keep in mind what G. Simone told you about the week. Um, uh, uh, can, I, can, can I see that again? Um, the um, uh, week again, yeah. where, where um, I, I thought that was brilliant. I thought that was, that was absolutely, we should pay attention. Uh, the idea is that the day is within you. The day is not out here. The, the day is actually within you. Let me run this through one more time. Uh, and that was an excellent read of, of the seventh overstanding that what you call your day is what your day is going to mean to you. What you call your day is what your day or your week or your month or your year is going to mean to you. And especially if you're on a spiritual path, or if you're practicing the gift of pata, uh, or any of that spoken word, the logos, any of that word to, to, to materialization uh, kind of science, you want to pay attention to this. Uh, you want to pay attention to this. Um, uh, we have meaning and mercy Monday, trust and I'm sorry, truth and trust Tuesday, will and wealth Wednesday. Thanks and Thoughts Friday, uh, Thursday, Faith and Fruit Friday, Skill and Success Saturday, Soulful and Sourceful Sunday. Let's, see, let's hear it again. Meaning and Mercy Monday, Truth and Trust Tuesday, Will and Wealth Wednesday, Thanks and Thoughts Thursday, Faith and Fruit. Friday, skill and success Saturday, soulful and sourceful Sunday. That is a full 
day plan. That is a full body plan. And we're going to take that into our week as well. And think on these thoughts. Simone dropped an acronym on you as well. Um, gossip. Giving out someone's secret information publicly. Uh, the, the, and, and what is the solution here? Um, uh, uh, guide our speech so individuals prosper. Both the gospel, gossip. Guide our speech so individuals prosper. Don't give out someone's secret information publicly. Take that in. That's powerful. Okay, on with the read now. So, I, I wanted to say something to hip hop's teachers, um, and in, in, in particular, so I'm going to read this part here. This is just a foundational piece of knowledge. Some of you have already heard this, and, and well, none of you have heard it in this organized form that I got it in right now, but, but those who you have studied with me, you'll know that this is our basic unifying language. And this is the point, a unifying language. That's why I'm starting this here as well. The special read is for hip hop's teachers. And, and hip hop's teachers are united through language, through a cultural language that the first teacher passes on to you. You learn the language and pass it on to others that are teachers. This is what connects us. This begins lineage. This begins heritage. This begins real culture. So I want to talk to the teachers of hip hop because this information is valuable. What I'm about to drop on you is, is, is valuable. Uh, and I'm just trying to get my, um, I just want to put a note here so I don't, These are segments from a book that I wrote or, that I wrote called An Introduction to Hip Hop. All of what I'm going to be expressing as hip hop is an introduction to hip hop. Because I am hip hop's first teacher and I expect teachers after me to do better than me. This is the prime teaching. This is the primitive, the first, the authoritative, authentic teaching of hip hop. This is what we all unite on. And once you know this, you build from here your own teaching and your own style. But this is what unites us. This is the understanding that unites us. Let's get started. This authentic hip hop tutorial is produced for those that seriously teach or would like to teach hip hop. I am hip hop's first master teacher, KRS-One. And it is my sacred duty, as well as my pleasure, to reveal this important cultural knowledge to you. I intend for this study to reveal itself at the right time to the right person in the right place. And behold, here you are. With this introduction to hip hop, I intend to empower hip hop's authentic teachers. Of course, anyone can learn from what I am going to present here today. But in truth, this study is all about the empowerment of hip hop's real teachers. This introduction to hip hop is exactly what it says it is, an introduction. Of course, you will have to take the full course at the Temple of Hip Hop to be certified and or ordained to teach hip hop officially. But this tutorial will at least introduce you to the basics of our hip hop studies course and connect you to the real cultural authority necessary to teach such a course. For hip hop's real teachers, it is here that you are empowered and direct you are empowered by a, by a direct connection to the origin of the hip-hop teaching tradition itself. This is important to understand at the top of this study or any study regarding culture because real cultural knowledge as well as its certifications to teach are passed on. They're not simply learned or achieved. Culture is passed on. This is the first lesson right here. Culture is passed on. It is a subjective experience. It is something that you are or you eventually become. If you are not the culture, you cannot pass on the culture. If you are not an authentic cultural architect, you cannot pass on such authenticity or, or, and or authority onto others. You cannot, you don't, you, you don't, you don't have, you simply don't have the knowledge 
or the respect of or from the culture. This, however, is where most learning institutions and their teachers are today with their presentations of hip hop as a course or as a class or as a master class. And I say this respectfully, you know, in no way am I attacking anyone here or, or trying to diss other universities and so on. We are grateful for those that teach hip hop, but here we're gonna have to take our course seriously. Or should I say, we're gonna have to take the teaching of hip hop seriously. And presently, people are not taking the teaching of hip hop seriously. They're just freestyling it. You're getting more about rappers and, 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 and top selling rappers. You're not even really getting the core of MC. And we got to do something about this. And that's why I'm, I'm saying this into our record for the public and for us, really for us. But, you know, these things are public as well. And universities and other people may be studying this later on. Let it be known then what a real hip-hop teacher is from a real hip-hop teacher. Anyone can teach what they've heard. Anyone can teach what they've seen or heard. But to be authentic and authoritative with one's teaching, to be real about one's teaching, one must acquire such authenticity and authority from the originators of the course or the ancestors of the culture. To be called an expert at something, one must begin at the beginning of that something, eventually mastering all aspects of that something, further developing that something. If you are not an, uh, an expert at something, how can you teach it? If you are not accredited and acknowledged by the experts and or originated, of your subject, what then are you actually teaching? Again, anyone can teach what they've seen or heard, but without being directly connected to the originating source of the subject, such teachings are not authentic or authoritative at all. Such teachings are only the opinions and observations of that particular teacher, respectfully. It is when one has been educated and then authorized by the originators of the subject or craft that one is an authentic and authoritative teacher of the subject or craft. And again, this is why the, the, this is why the temple of hip hop exists today. This is why you're on this call right now. Because you're becoming an authentic hip hop teacher. Because you're learning from an authentic hip hop teacher. In fact, you're learning from the first master teacher of hip hop. In this course, you will be studying or rather continuing the culture of hip hop. Not just its music or its art, but its culture, which has to be passed on. For it is in the culture of hip hop that one fully understands its music and its art. Here, both student and teacher are empowered through a unified language grounded in the foundations of the culture itself. Here, we are not objectively teaching hip hop through the biographies of top selling rappers and DJs. Here, you are learning about hip-hop and its culture from hip-hop and its culture. I am hip-hop, and I am the architect of its culture. I, with others, did the actual work to establish hip-hop as a global culture of peace and prosperity. And it is this authoritative cultural knowledge that is at the center of our study. Therefore, more than simply a study, this is also an authorization. This is the beginning of an authentic hip-hop teaching authorization designed for the authentic teachers of hip-hop. This is not entertainment. Again, this is not entertainment. Again, this is not entertainment. This is the transference of important cultural knowledge necessary for the correct teaching of hip-hop and the empowerment of the hip-hopper or hip-hopper. This is about the transference of real cultural authority. Nowhere else is such an authority available or transferable because no one else has done the actual work to establish hip hop as a global culture. We, the temple of hip hop, did the actual work to establish and then preserve and promote hip hop as a global culture of peace and prosperity. And because of this work, we now possess the knowledge to teach our people about the formation of their culture. This begins the correct teaching of hip hop as culture. Did you hear what I said? It is because of the work that we develop the knowledge. And that's the only fact there is. 
It is here that we mature, we mature, leaving the realm of hip-hop as entertainment, entering the realm of hip-hop as culture and as fact. You see, also the purpose of an education is maturity. A real education, the purpose of a real education is to mature the student, the total student. You see, hip-hop as music can be debated all day. Many people contributed to the creation of hip-hop as a music genre, rap music. But hip-hop as culture is far less debatable. Only a few people had this idea in the early days of hip-hop, and I am one of these people. I am an original source. KRS-One is an original source. Sure, today you can hear people speak about hip-hop as culture openly and frequently, but such was not the case just 20 years ago. The hip-hop community had to be educated to the fact that they were a distinct community of specialized craftspeople, and such an education was not easy, nor is it over. Here, you are truly empowered through this education, through this call you're getting right now, you are truly empowered because the founder of the hip-hop teaching tradition is also the architect of hip-hop's actual culture and the author of this particular introduction to hip-hop. Look what you're getting. You're getting the architect of the, because imagine, I could be the first um, teacher of a culture, but not its architect. I could be the architect of a culture, but not its teacher. I could be the architect and the teacher, but not teach it, not not to, not make a course that, that that you can hear and 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 develop knowledge from. I have to be the architect, then the teacher of the work that was done by the architect, then the the printer or the writer, the scribe of what the teacher has learned. I'm passing this on to you. Knowing this, however, knowing that KRS-One is, is a cultural, is, is the master teacher and hip-hop's cultural architect, knowing this is not for me to know. Knowing this is not for me to, it's not for me to know, to keep saying, I'm the, I'm the master teacher, I'm the master, that's not for me to know. That's not even really for me to say. It's for you to know. <laughs> and for you to say. It is for your empowerment as a real hip-hop teacher to know that you are learning from an original source, from a real hip-hop teacher, and that your teaching of hip-hop is grounded in truth and supported by hip-hop's actual culture. Not no dream and makeup stuff. This is it. We built the culture. We're teaching you what happened. The last thing a real hip-hop teacher wants to be known as is a fraud. This too is important to know at the top of our study because right now as you hear these words, there are deliberate attempts by too many universities, colleges, cultural centers, museums, and other learning institutions to simply take our culture, hip hop, and interpret it, even exploit it academically for their own financial, social, and or political gain. That's going on right now. This authentic introduction to hip hop prevents such exploitation by offering not only the correct teaching of hip hop for hip hoppers, but such a teaching also establishes a unifying language for hip hop's real teachers. It is through our unified cultural language that we not only pass on the best parts of our culture to preceding generations, but it is a uh, uh, proceeding generation, sorry. Uh, that we pass on the best parts of our culture to proceeding generations of hip hoppers, but it is through our cultural language that we form the basis of our unity as a culture. What is it that unites culture? Language. Unity in language and thus in thought is the core of any culture. The unbroken continuity that hip hop's teachers share through knowledge and through language is our intellectual strength and our cultural unity. KRS-One is hip-hop's first teacher. And it is only an authentic hip-hop teacher that can train and ordain other authentic hip-hop teachers. This is just simple. This is where one's cultural authority to even teach hip-hop comes from. It is passed on from one cultural authority to the next through a specialized cultural language. It is this foundational language that unites us as teachers and as a culture. And it is this foundational language that begins one's real cultural authority to teach hip-hop. 
But some teachers, as well as their learning institutions, desperate for student enrollment, simply create their authority to teach hip hop out of thin air. With no certification from any authentic hip hop institution or teacher, no mastery of the subject being taught, no job placement after the subject, no apprenticeships, apprenticeships uh, based upon the subject of the study, no legacy or heritage being passed on, no tradition being upheld, and of course, no national or even globally recognized certification or degree that establishes one as an expert in one's field of study. None of this is going on, okay? Somehow still, Learning institutions and teachers of all sorts are claiming scholarship and expertise in the teaching of hip hop when they actually have none. I say this at the beginning of our study, again, not as an attack or even as an unwarranted criticism against those that may claim to teach hip hop in some way. But in truth, if we are going to teach the take the teaching of hip hop seriously, such unprofessional presentations of hip hop by those that simply claim to be hip hop's teachers with no legitimate accreditations or training from the culture itself, this cannot continue. We can plainly see that many who claim to professionally teach hip hop actually hold degrees in other disciplines, thinking that because they may hold a degree in cultural studies or sociology or black studies or musicology or journalism and the like, that they are now somehow qualified to teach hip hop. They are sadly mistaken. This is like saying, because I have a degree in law, I can also teach medicine. Or because I have a degree in engineering, I can also teach biology. Or, or, or put it this way, in a more cultural sense, like those who had record companies or photographers that took pictures of us or this kind of thing. In a more cultural sense, you could say, because I own a pizza restaurant, I can teach the whole of Italian culture, <laughs> even to Italians. <laughs> That's how people are approaching hip hop. Because I saw it on MTV and heard it on the radio, I could teach you now hip hop. I have a, I have a large record collection um, and I have a few flyers from old, old school flyers. I can now teach you the culture of hip hop. This is ridiculous, okay? From a real teaching point of view, the subject the subjective question to one's, from a real teaching point of view, the subjective question to ask of oneself is, how serious am I about that which I claim to teach? How serious am I really about hip hop? Presently, many who claim to teach hip hop have never mastered any of hip hop's elements, nor are they actually part of hip hop's culture, nor are they part of the history that they teach. Still, however, in colleges all over the United States, many educators are proclaiming themselves scholars, teachers of the hip-hop arts and sciences with no formal knowledge or training or apprenticeship in regards to hip-hop at all. Not only is this, not only is this approach to hip-hop poor scholarship, but such a freestyle teaching of hip-hop's real culture and history creates contradiction and confusion for everyone involved. This is contrary to the preservation and further development of hip hop and young hip hop intellectuals must be aware of this type of irresponsibility, even fraud. You got to notice at the top of the study. Again, to be an authentic teacher of hip hop, one has to be trained by an authentic teacher of hip hop. And again, this is why such a study is before you now. As mentioned earlier, this is a cultural study, not an entertainment project. Cultural studies require hard evidence, retrievable data, verifiable history, and truth. Different from an entertainment history, which is literally made up and often led by purely commercial interests as well. A real cultural history rests upon real and verifiable events, verifiable dates, people, places, it, it's, it's also, it also rests upon the consistent testimonies of the culture's originators. Having a connection to the original source of a subject makes one's scholarship regarding that subject authoritative and authentic. And that's what you're getting right now. Authoritative and authentic. Listen to not just the words that I'm saying, but the culture that I'm revealing. This is how hip-hop as culture 
feels about the teaching of itself. And this is not just KRS-One as teachers saying this. I've spoken to others who see their pictures up in museums and can't get a dime out the museum, no. They actually paid to get into the museum to see themselves on the wall. And they're like, I, nobody approved this. Nobody, And the museum's getting it offline or from the photographer that snapped the picture and don't want to give nothing back to the person they took the picture from and then got money from. I mean, let, think about that for a minute. You come and take my, I give you free access. You take my picture. Now you own the picture of someone valuable, of someone popular, of someone that a museum will pay money for that picture. You take the picture, sell it to the museum. The artists don't get nothing. How is that not exploitation? Well, this is what most of these hip hop museums are doing. And I say that respectfully, I'm, I'm only saying it so that we can correct it. This is what we're doing. We're not giving nothing back to Kaz, Tony Tone, Grandmaster Flash, Melly Mel, nothing. Kane, Rakim, we're using their images, using their photos, using it. But they themselves don't even say or can't even say. No, I don't. They themselves can't say, I don't like that image. I'd rather you use this image. Or under that image, can you put this? Or even, I got a new project coming out. Can you sell my project in your museum? No. These museums are taking. These colleges are taking. If you're going to teach in your college, you're going to teach on an artist and say this artist is the reason why hip-hop is what it is. Or this icon is the reason why this is what it is. You in a college, you're teaching this to the students. But you will give that icon no honorary degree. You're teaching about the, the brilliance of this person. But in your college, you will not respect them as a scholar or a teacher yourself. And nor will you accreditate them with the respect you give to others. That's wrong. All of this is wrong. And this is the point. This is, this is why I'm bringing it up. To, for the sake of hip-hop's teachers, we got to correct that. You can't keep taking, taking, taking from the culture, not giving nothing back and thinking you good. Um, so our foundational knowledge of hip hop, and you got to be clear with this too, okay? Our foundational knowledge of hip hop doesn't just come from books or films or sound recordings. We are the knowledge that we're teaching. We, we are the knowledge that we're teaching. And I'm not teaching you about criminal minded and by all means necessary or my records, my albums. I'm not teaching you about that. I'm not teaching you about my videos. I, I'm, I'm not teaching you even about, um, you know, my shows or whatever. My, I'm not teaching you about me as an artist. We could get to that. I'm teaching you hip hop. Hip hop. The entity itself, not me in it, or anybody's contributions to it. Let's discuss hip hop as it is. Because none of us matter. Hip hop is what matters. That's the value. Hip hop is what made me who I am. Hip hop is what made everybody that is millionaires off this rap music or breaking or graffiti art or DJing or beatboxing. It's hip hop that made us. We didn't make hip hop. Did you hear me? Hip hop made us. We didn't make hip hop. We formed its culture. But the actual behavior, the attitude, the worldview called hip hop, the collective consciousness called hip hop, that, that, that came out of the vine. That, that, we can only step, we can only deal with that objective subjectively. Objectively subjectively. This is how wild hip hop is. And what do I mean? Meaning that, meaning that, and, and Crazy Legs t talked about this last week. We, we, we read about this last week. It came from us, but it wasn't us. It was us, 
but it didn't come from us. It was in us, and we didn't even know what was coming out of us, but it was in us. It was in us, and we didn't even know what was coming out of us. So, so hip-hop is both objective and subjective. Or should I say first, it's subjective. Then it becomes objective when it becomes us. I am hip-hop. The objective view of hip-hop is me. Or my graffiti piece. Or, you know, some other object. But KRS-One, the body is an object too. And hip-hop is exemplified through my body object. As well as yours if you are hip-hop. So, realize this at the beginning when you're teaching hip-hop. Okay, be clear. This teaching is authentic. Our foundational knowledge of hip-hop does not come from books, films, or does not only come from books, films, or sound recordings. We teach what we did. We teach what we did, or what we discovered, or what our friends did, or that which we have solid evidence for regarding hip-hop. Yes, there are indeed others that can legitimately, legitimately claim to be founding fathers, early pioneers, fathers of hip-hop, mothers of hip-hop. But the teaching methodology presented here, here, the temple of hip-hop, focuses more upon hip-hop itself than anyone's contribution to it. What is hip-hop itself? And, and again, this is the real teaching. Because what I'm trying to do is pass something on to you. It's not about me. I took on something that made me me. It was called hip-hop. I'm passing it on to you. It'll make you you. But the real, the, the real value is in hip hop, it's not in KRS-One. The real value is in hip hop. When you master that, then you enjoy whatever accolades you see me enjoying or any hip hop icon, figure, whatever. Whatever you see us enjoying, you will enjoy the same thing. But you gotta master hip hop. You gotta perfect hip hop. You gotta complete your studies in hip hop. You gotta take hip hop seriously. Now, of course, this is not to say that we do not honor the legacies of everyone that contributed to the birth and further development of hip-hop in some way. But such is just not the focus here. There are numerous well-produced documentaries and books on those that contributed to the birth and formation of early hip-hop, and we urge all students, apprentices, and teachers to study these materials as well, okay? Films like Rhyme and Reason, I'm just shouting out a few films, Freshest Kids, The Freshest Kids, these are films. Scratch, The Evolution of Hip Hop, Beef, Founding Fathers, and of course Wild Style, Breaking, Beat Street, Crush Groove, Style Wars, you know these are good places to start. Books like Ego Trip's Book of Rap Lists. Martha Cooper's Hip Hop Files, Chuck D Presents This Day in Rap and Hip Hop History, Jamel Shabazz's Back in the Days, The All Music Guide to Hip Hop, and of course, The Gospel of Hip Hop. These are all excellent materials for trying, for, for, for it, when you want to know who did what when. You know, the honoring of this one, or the name of that one, knowing this one's name and biography, all those books will cover that. We don't do that here. Just go there and reference the books. We talk about hip hop here only. That's what we're interested in. So, wait a minute, let me go back. Right. So as with the teaching of any culture, it is heritage uh, that we are focused upon here. We're teaching culture. We're not teaching the biographies of rappers and DJs. We're teaching hip-hop, which is collective consciousness, culture. It is the passing on of important information regarding the existence of hip-hop that we are focused upon here, be clear. Here, in this foundational teaching course, it is hip-hop's heritage 
that rests at the center of hip-hop's teaching methodology because it is one's heritage that determines one's value and even one's meaning in the world. This is what our people need to know, and this is what we teach. This is what is empowering right here. Here we begin the study and thus the teaching of hip-hop with an awareness of one's real heritage within it. We begin with heritage, or one's hip-hop heritage, because heritage is all about inheritance, what has been passed on to you. For anyone struggling to survive modern urban life, especially those practicing hip-hop, this is what one needs to become aware of first. One needs to become aware of one's hip-hop heritage, past, present, and future. One needs to know first what has been given to one by one's own ancestors. Even if one's own legacy or heritage has been stolen or disrespected, it is the very knowing that one even has a heritage that brings value to oneself and to what one does. It is those that don't even know or even respect that they have a heritage that are truly poor and without value. Anyone with a heritage has value, and the teaching of hip-hop begins with the raising of that hip-hopper's self-worth, the hip-hopper's value. For the hip-hop community, most of whom do struggle to survive modern urban life, a good education begins with one's real value and empowerment right from where one is at. And such a value and empowerment begins with one's attitude, one's character, which is what, what hip-hop really is. This is not about race, class, gender, age. This is about character. This is also about agreement and unity and the continuity of a specific hip hop teaching tradition which begins with hip hop's real cultural heritage. Unity with this specific teaching tradition, unity with it, imparts an empowerment. This is the word, empowerment, that raises the value of the hip hopper inside and out this is what i'm this is what i'm imparting to you power and this is just the introduction this is what i could give away for free those or should i say give away publicly for those with little money and or opportunity it is value that one needs not necessarily money you better hear me right now for it is value that attracts money not the other way around in fact money is only a symbol of value but value itself is all about worth, which is a quality or character that commands esteem or respect. Such esteem or respect is not only achieved by mastering a chosen skill, but in a larger sense, in a larger sense, uh, uh, Wait a minute, I'm sorry. Uh, in a larger sense, such esteem and or respect is also passed down from one generation to the next, giving importance and value to each succeeding generation that continues the tradition. I want to go over that one more time. This is very important. For those with little money and or opportunity, it is value that one needs, not necessarily money. For it is value that attracts money, slow down on that. Did you hear it? Once you're valuable, you get money. For it is value that attracts money, not the other way around. In fact, money is only a symbol of value. Money is a symbol of value. Money is only, in fact, money is only a symbol of value, but value itself, now here's the jewel. Value itself is all about worth. What are you worth? And worth, which is a quality. Look at this. Worth is not anything material. <laughs> worth is a quality or character that commands esteem or respect. That's what it means when you're worth something. Worth is a quality or character that commands somebody else's respect. Look, look at what's being, look at this. This is, and, and this is why we put this here, and this is why we teach this. You have to be empowered right from where you are. That's hip hop. You gotta be empowered right from where you are. So, 
How are you empowered right from where you are? You got to change your attitude. You have to be, you have to adopt a, wor a worthy attitude. Worthy attitude. Worthy. Are you worthy? What are you worth? If you ain't worth nothing, you don't get nothing. How do you become worth something? First, it's your attitude. It's the quality or character that commands esteem or respect. Such esteem or respect is not only achieved by mastering a chosen skill. So that's number one. How do you get this esteem or this respect? How do you get this worth? You master a skill. Any master of a skill commands esteem and respect. Any master of any skill is worth something. It's the mastery that is the worth and the value. The mastery is the value. So first, such esteem and or respect is 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 not only achieved by mastering a chosen skill, but in a larger sense. Okay, so first, master a skill and you achieve your worth. That's right from where you are. Master your MC. You don't, you don't have to have no money, nothing. If you, you listen to me in another country where it seems like it is helpless, it's hopeless for you, master the arts of breaking and you'll get a passport. Master the art of MCing. And you will dazzle your neighborhood. Master the art of cutting, mixing, and scratching. And learn how to DJ. Not mimic the radio. But how to put on moods. I'm going to take you to this mood. With these series of songs. I'm going to bring you to this mood. Learn how to DJ. Any of our elements. If you master our elements. Any of hip hop's elements. They will raise your value. And that's what we, be that's what we begin the hip hop teaching with. The raising of the hip hop, the hip hoppers value your worth. So right from where you are, you could jump, leap up right from where you are. And others don't know this because they ain't really hip hop, respectfully. This is what we had to do. That's why we're, we're passing culture on to you. We're not reading a book about hip hop and then telling you about it. No, this is what we had right from where we were with broken buildings, top streets. We're playing with garbage, okay? We took that garbage though and said, wait a minute, we got to change our attitude about the garbage here. The garbage is always going to be the garbage. But if we start looking at it as something else, maybe it will perform differently for us. First, change your attitude. Get a worthy attitude. Secondly, come on over here and master a skill. Master a skill. So not only is it master a skill, but in a larger sense, such esteem and or respect, you're commanding this esteem or respect, is passed down from one generation to the next, giving importance and value to each succeeding generation that continues the tradition. This is the importance of tradition. When you have a tradition, you're already valuable. Here, it is not just about the study of the past. It is also about one's commitment to the future. So you have a tradition. So you know something came before me and something's coming after me. So here I am in the middle of the tradition. I'm not going to play those who came before me. I'm continuing it because I'm empowered by their work, by who they were, who they said I was, what they laid down. That's my tradition. And I'm empowered by my tradition. Now, I'm, a, I'm the latest version of the tradition. I will be someone else's tradition. I will be someone else's ancestor. What kind of work am I putting forward right now to the future? Realizing that one is part of a continuum and acting like it. Realizing that one is part of an ongoing movement which others will be part of in the future and acting like it enlarges the being of the student apprentice who now has all the right to partake in hip-hop. Your being is enlarged. 
Others have small beings because they're only thinking about themselves and they're only thinking about the moment. So you can only so your whole thinking process is very small and very limited. But those who are studying with the temple of hip hop, those who are studying real hip hop from a real master teacher, your intelligence begins to expand now. It begins to expand because you realize, I don't even know about KRS-One and what he did as a rapper. What I want to know is, is the language that KRS-One uses to be valuable. How did he go from being a high school dropout to teaching at the top universities? It's a language and I'm, I'm passing it on to you right now those who take it seriously because keep in mind this is a public event here that, 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 that we're putting together i'm looking to help my public in this way but only a few people really gonna take advantage of this really i mean come on we know that i'm speaking into the future i'm doing my work as a teacher so i'm always justified but if you don't take this seriously that's on you that's on you i'm giving you a jewel right now through this medium that you could take and use right from where you are if you comprehend what it is I'm saying to you. This is the teaching of hip hop. This is the beginning of the teaching. What does the hip hopper get? Not what does the teacher get? What does the student get? What does the apprentice get? Not what does the teacher get? Uh, this is the value right here, our cultural value. And such a value is built up over many years, over many generations, like an investment that you don't see the immediate return on, but it grows in value with each succeeding year. Heritage and, and it's, uh, uh, and it's, and, and, um, like heritage, culture, birthrights, these things mature in the same ways. And so far, the heritage that we're teaching right now, this heritage, the hip hop heritage, has been maturing for over 50 years. And as a matter of fact, next year, 2023, it'll be actually approximately 50 years. If you start from 1973, uh, it'll be 50, it'll be hip hop's 50th anniversary in 2023. With your completion of this authentic hip hop studies course, which you're taking right now, we've been taking over the year, you will inherit that's the word, inherit the authenticity and authority to preserve and continue real hip hop. You will inherit it. You'll be able to say, I know what Chris is thinking. I know what the teacher's thinking. I know what KRS-One means when he said this and what he mean when he said that. I understand what his intention is. I understand you take all that. That's culture. That's not in a book. That's not in a book. Me, me shaking my head like this. That's not in a book. That's not in a book. This is the culture. <laughs> this is the culture. Not me saying it's not in a book. It's not in a book. Those words are not the culture. Me talking like this, moving, the way I'm moving, the way I'm, I'm wiping my mouth. I, I'm, this is the culture. The attitude that I'm giving you while I'm reading this. My errors as I mess up and stumble over words. All of this is the culture. And you have to be a culture keeper. This is the beginning of the teaching right here. Knowing the culture and getting it directly from the master teacher of the culture. Among others, which is why our Hip Hop Appreciation Week is what it is. You're going to get it from other teachers like Tony Tone. Grandmaster Cass, these are hip hop's real teachers right here. And we're putting them in front of you so that you can ask the proper questions for DJ Hollywood. He was there. <laughs> okay, forget all the dumb talk. He was there asking the potent question. Let him answer you. And whatever answer you give, you get in the culture as well as his answer. There'll be an answer, but there'll also be an attitude. There'll also be a, 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 a way about him. That is the culture, and you need to take a look at that. It is here that we begin to see the value of real hip-hop, cultural hip-hop. To inherit something is to receive from an ancestor the property or title of that thing. 
Only an ancestor or an originator, a creator of something, can legitimately pass on such a title or property. And this is what our teaching of hip-hop is all about. Here we begin with an awareness of one's actual inheritance, an inheritance that only this course can provide because the author of this course is also the author of the teaching discipline itself, the hip-hop teaching discipline itself. That's what makes this whole thing powerful because you're learning from the architect of the culture, the first master teacher, and I'm actually teaching. I'm actually giving you the knowledge right now. I'm imparting it unto you right now. I'm doing the work right now. All you have to do is receive it. This bit of information, however, has less to do with me, as it has more to do with the empowerment of the student or apprentice taking the course. This is what you got to know, so people don't talk you down or wave their degrees in your face and you're intimidated. Oh, no, I got a degree from Harvard, so he could talk to me about hip-hop. Oh, this one got a degree from this place, so they could talk to me about hip-hop. Or oh, this one was part of this group. And, and they was the real, real. So they could talk. No, sorry. The real begins right here when it starts with the teaching of hip hop and the organization of its culture. It starts right here. Right here. Say it. Say it. Say it. Starts right here. No way around it. Can't get around it. This is what it is. If, if you're dealing with facts and truth and retrievable data and stuff like that. But if you're just going to make stuff up, then people say whatever they want to say. But if we're talking about teaching, which has to do with fact, which has to do with data, which has to do with info, information, which has to do with knowledge. Well, you're learning from an original source today and you've been learning from an original source. All of this is true. But again, the reason to, to point all of this out is so that you are directly connected to the, or that you know that you are connected to the original source. That's why I'm saying all of this. It's not for me to say, it's for you to know. So you're not beat down by others because you can't cite the facts. Cite the facts. The facts are always gonna protect you and keep you in an authoritative position. Cite the facts, but you gotta know the facts. If you don't know the facts, how are you gonna cite them? People are gonna tell you anything. Now, I want to move on uh, with this teaching. Um, this is another section of the book now. And this is the teaching on hip-hop. You got the first part about the attitude of the teacher. What we're looking for and why it's important to study from a master teacher. Here's the second half, and this is this is gonna um, this takes us this concludes our reading. But this is but this is, this is I'm, I'm gonna get I'm gonna uh, read through this entire piece. Listen to what I'm saying. This is the knowledge. This is the knowledge. This is authentic, meaning not counterfeit or copied. This is authoritative, meaning this is coming from an expert in the field. This is cultural. It's culturally sound, meaning it's, this is the knowledge of those who created the culture. This is knowledge from the creation of the culture. This is what we learned while we were building hip-hop. When we say real hip-hop, we are not talking about the differences between what we hear promoted over the airways as rap music versus what we know to be original hip-hop or original MCs. We are not critiquing the rap music styles of fake rappers versus real MCs. Here, when we say real hip hop, we are first approaching hip hop as an actual thing, as an actual ob a thing with actual objective ob uh, uh, existence. Those that actually live hip hop are hip hop. Those that actually live hip hop usually experience hip-hop subjectively. We are it. We, we are hip-hop. Hip-hop is a, for hip-hoppers, hip-hop is a subjective experience. It comes from us. But to teach hip-hop, it is better to begin objectively, meaning what hip-hop is in the world, what hip-hop is as an observable subject, And I'm, I want you to, to get this in, okay? When you're teaching hip-hop, 
First, you know I am hip hop. I am hip hop. This is what you say to your, of yourself. But when teaching it, you being hip hop don't matter. <laughs> okay, you got to pass something on. So you deal with hip hop objectively. First, what does everybody else feel about hip hop? What, what, is, what does hip hop look like to everybody else? What do we all agree is hip hop? And most people will say rap music. And so in a lot of ways you can start there. It's rap music. And you can really start there, actually. We don't start there. But as an example, you start where your audience intelligence is at. And as a teacher, you can't just start with, you know, some, some lofty uh, hip hop theory that you may know. You have to start with what, where people are at. Like you have to come with what, you, which means you have to be abreast. You have to, you have to be abreast on what the latest trends in hip hop are and is without judging them, without judgment. You just have to know. Now you may not agree. <laughs> <laughs> you may say this is a bull. You know, you may not agree with what you see, but you got to know it as a teacher, and you have to be are able to articulate the latest trends, the latest artists, who's hot, who's not. You got to know what that is in in hip hop as culture, not rap music. You ain't got to know all these rappers, but as culture, things that are people, things, and events that are affecting your culture, you got to know something about that to be able to talk. To the culture, so you got to have a a, a a wide. So you know you got you, you have to have a broad knowledge of hip hop, not just from your academic or scholarly point of view, but also from the point of view of the layperson, the average everyday hip hopper who ain't trying to save a culture and build a nation. I just want to rap, man. <laughs> That's it. I just want to break, man. I, you know I love my culture and so on, but this ain't my lane. You got to be able to talk to that person too. And, and talk for their benefit, not for your own. So what we realize is that, and, and let me say this too, we're going to start objectively, but let me finish the subjective understanding of hip hop. But I'm trying to make this distinction and, and I have to spend some time here. Subjective, objective. Hip hop that is in you, I am hip hop, rap is something we do, hip hop is something we live, we are not just doing hip hop, we are hip hop, this is all subjective, and that's what hip hop actually is as a culture, it's in you, on you, it is you, but when teaching it, what does hip hop look like in the world, <laughs> what, is, what does it look like, how is it being interpreted by the rest of the world? What do we know to be true? And not just MTV. I'm talking about real scholarship. Other scholars. How do they look at hip-hop? Not these people that play rap videos or play music. That's, again, not hip-hop. What are sociologists saying? What are linguists saying about hip-hop? That's what we want to know as teachers. What are philosophers saying? What is political science majors saying? What are theologians saying about hip-hop? Well, from a metaphysical point of view, and subjective, hip-hop itself never enters the physical world. Hip-hop itself is a shared idea. You cannot go to hip-hop or eat hip-hop or wear hip-hop or even touch hip-hop. Again, hip-hop exists as a shared idea. Do you imagine that hip-hop is an idea? <laughs> like, imagine that, okay? It never enters the physical world. You cannot drink a can of hip hop and suddenly know how to rap. You cannot put hip hop on his clothes. You can't even read a book in order to understand hip hop. Hip hop begins ultimately as an attitude about oneself. As stated in the introduction, what we just read, most people use the term hip hop synonymously with rap and rappers, but this usage is incorrect. Of course, from a surface point of view, hip-hop, spelled in lowercase letters, can be seen as a music genre. But in truth, but, 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 but the truth of the matter is that hip-hop is the behavior that produces our music, our dances, and our arts. Hip-hop itself is not a music, or a dance, or an art. Hip-hop is the name of the awareness that produces this. Again, hip-hop is not a dance, a music, or an art. Hip-hop is the attitude, 
the behavior, the collective consciousness, the shared idea that causes or produces breaking, MCing, graffiti art, DJing, beatboxing, street fashion, street language, street knowledge, and street entrepreneurialism. Hip hop is the behavior that produces that. Make sure that you fully understand this. Hip hop is the behavior that produces our music, art, and dance. But that's subjective, okay? That's subjective. Let us look at what hip hop looks like to other academics now. Intellectual scholars, okay? Those that, that study culture, study linguistics, study history, not these DJs. If you get your hip hop history from a DJ, you got to do some checking over there. Or you getting your hip hop history from a rapper? You know, no, 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 no real historian, no real teacher, no scholar, no linguist, no, 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 no person who spend their time and their life on this. And again, this is about character. You know, you you want to learn something. Don't you want to learn from the best or from the most accurate? Others, others don't even know how to think like this. They just say, well, this guy was part of a group, a rap group, so I'm going to learn hip-hop from him or her. Well, this guy's a famous DJ, so I'm going to learn my hip-hop from this person. They're not even a teacher. They, they, like, you know, teaching is an art unto itself. Traditionally, hip-hop has been approached as an art form that consists of four core elements. Breaking, or breakdancing, emceeing, or rap, aerosol art, graffiti art, or graffiti writing, and DJing, the cutting, mixing, and scratching of recorded materials. These are called the core four elements of hip-hop. Hip-hop's core four elements, however, also come with specific and unique urban clothing styles, language styles, business and trade techniques, as well as a collective body of knowledge derived from its internal experiences with itself and the world. And, and get that, you know, this is, this is hip hop's knowledge comes from hip hop. Breaking and seeing graffiti art, DJing knowledge and overstanding. These original hip hop elements have created uniquely rich hip hop stories, hip hop legends and myths, original hip hop arts, popular hip hop music, and thought provoking hip hop poetry that critiques and interprets the world in which the hip hop community exists. Therefore, from our initial core for artistic elements, we expand into five more cultural elements beatboxing, street fashion, street language, street knowledge, and street entrepreneurialism. It is hip hop's initial core four elements that help its other five to exist. They kind of play off of each other, the art, the culture, the culture, the art. Breaking, MCing, graffiti art, and DJing are the core four elements. The other five, like I mentioned before, are more cultural. Breaking, MCing, and graffiti art, DJing are artistic. The others, street fashion, language, knowledge, that's cultural. And uh, notice the spelling of DJing, beatboxing, the I-N, beatboxing, B-O-X-I-N, boxing, M-C-N, E-M-C-E-E-I-N, DJing, D-E-E-J-A-Y-I-N, okay? These are not, these, these are new words. These are not slang words. These are new words. And you should approach these words the same way you would approach words like virgin or Berlin or mucin or, or insulin, penicillin, breaking, DJing. These are not slang words. They're not missing their G. This is the way we speak. And this is the way we will codify our language for our culture. That the G is not missing. MCing is a new word in the English language. Chilling is a new word in the English language. 
At first glance, hip hop can be seen as simply an urban music genre inspired by African American and Latino youths of the Bronx during the early 1970s. However, upon closer observation, hip hop becomes a way of life, a specific way of being and seeing the world, a unique view of the world and world events. We are uniquely hip hop because the repetition of our unique being and seeing has created our specific hip hop way of life. And the hip hop way of life is what we call hip hop's culture or hip hop culture. As culture, Hip hop is the specific behaviors, traits, expressions, patterns, and institutions of our unique collective consciousness. It, hip hop, is our intellectual and artistic activity as well as the works produced by it. In light of these facts, the Temple of Hip Hop teaches nine elements to hip hop. Breaking MC and graffiti are DJing, beatboxing, street fashion, street language, street knowledge, and street entrepreneurialism. This is what hip hop actually produces when practiced in real life. In real life, when hip hop is expressed, it's not just expressed as breaking, or should I say breaking MC and graffiti are DJing. We are wearing stuff, we're talking about stuff, and chances are, if we're in a club or, or some arena getting ready to express hip hop, we're getting paid for it. So there's more going on than just us dancing and rapping. If you're talking culture. Uh, it, uh, uh, hip hop, <laughs> uh, this is what hip hop actually produces when practicing actual life. That's what I wanted to point out. The difference between hip hop as entertainment and hip hop as culture. The Oxford English Dictionary of New Words also points out, now this is what hip hop looks like to academics today. This is what hip hop looks like to professors and to those that actually study. The Oxford English Dictionary, the, what is called the Oxford Dictionary of New Words, because hip hop is a new word in the English language. It lists hip hop, noun. Hip hop is a noun. Actually, hip hop is a proper noun, but here it says, Noun, a street subculture originally among urban teenagers in the U.S., which combines rap music, graffiti art, and breakdancing with distinctive codes of dress and speech. More specifically, the dance music of this subculture, which features rap frequently on political themes, delivered above sparse electronic backing and harsh rhythm tracks. A adjective, belonging to hip-hop culture or its music. In transit, this is as an adjective, it belonging to hip hop culture or its music. As a trans, as a transitive verb, hip hop is to dance to hip hop. Hip hop means to dance to hip hop. Formed by combining the adjective hip in its slang sense, cool, with the noun hop, which also had a well established slang sense, dance. Hip hop has existed as an adverb meaning with hopping movements since the 17th century, but hip hop as a noun was a quite different development. And it was. Hip hop as, as in Oxford English uh, started off as a verb. Hip, what does it mean to hip hop? And I'll get to that later. What does it mean to hip hop? It means to hop in successive movements. That's a verb, it's an action word. But when, when, when that action word, that term hip hop was then applied to us, that we took the term on, saying hip hop, you don't stop. When we took that on, it went from being a verb to a noun. And, and, and look how culture changes words. It's not words that change culture, it's culture that changes words. Since the 17th century, uh, 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 moving with successive hops since the 17th century. But hip hop as a noun was quite a separate development. In uh, its adoption as the name of the subculture and its music may have been influenced by the catchphrase hip hop bebop chanted by the disc jockey and rapper Lovebug Starsky in the form to the hip hop, hip hop don't stop that body rock, end quote. Hip hop originated among, hold on one second.
Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't know what that was. Hip hop originated among young blacks and Hispanics in New York in the late 70s, but it and the term were first widely publicized in the early 80s. Now, this is this, look at this is what scholars know, and it, this is what's so interesting here. Let me just double back real, 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 real quick. So, when you're talking to other scholars or those that claim to teach hip hop, what I'm giving you right now is the latest facts on hip hop. If you're a scholar and don't know this, I don't know how you're. I don't know how how is that because you got to keep up with the latest changes and ideas that are affecting the culture. Not everything, just the Oxford English Dictionary. When it start listing your culture, you should have some knowledge of that. Whether they're right or wrong, you should still have some knowledge of what's being said about you. So, so look at this. They know, they said, they said may have been influenced, okay? By the catchphrase "hip hop bebop" chanted by the disc jockey and rapper Love Bug Starsky, a good friend of ours as well. Uh, rest in peace, Love Bug Starsky. But Love Bug Starsky, who's credited with coming up with the term hip hop. Okay, if you want to know who came up with the term hip hop, Love Bug Starsky. Now there are others, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. Uh, but Love Bug Starsky, as far as scholarship is concerned, is confirmed as the one who's coming up with the term hip hop. And the Oxford English linguists and and phonologists, well, not phonologists, but linguists, they they are they rec they understand this. Love Bug Starsky. Hip hop originated among young black and Hispanics in the in in New York in the late seventies, but it and the term were first widely publicized in the early 80s. In the US, the name was used to refer to an assertive and showy culture as a whole. See, in the US, because remember the Oxford is a British dictionary. So they're speaking from a British perspective and they're saying it came to us as a trendy dance. But they went further and said, no, they call it a subculture. Then they go further and just start calling it culture. Look how, and, and you got to know this about dictionary writers. They write like this, okay? And, and you got to take the information out of it. Uh, 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 let, let me hit it again. Hip hop originated among young black and Hispanic Hispanics in New York in the late 70s, but it and the term were first widely publicized in the early 80s. In the U.S., the name was used to refer to an assertive and showy culture as a whole. With its visible and flamboyant street manifestations and its related dress and hairstyles. That's not a music genre. That's a culture. And they're recognizing it. Breakdancing and crews of graffiti artists leaving their tag signatures are typical parts of the hip-hop scene. The word was first imparted to Britain to refer specifically to the music when it became popular in the clubs in the mid-80s. Though the dress and general culture have also since taken root amongst British urban blacks. Its popularity as a dance music has led to the development of the verb hip hop and the action noun hip hopping. Someone who listens to dance, someone who listens or dances to the music or follows the hip hop culture in general is a hip hopper. Adherents may consider themselves or be described as part of the Hip hop community or quote hip hop nation that's in the book. We are hip hoppers, part of a hip hop nation, part of a hip hop community. This is known by scholars. This is the objective look at hip hop. What does hip hop look like? It looks like a nation, it looks like a community, not a music genre. According to scholars, this is a culture. That has dress, hair, hairstyles, and ways of dress, and they're trying to capture the culture. They said, "Yes, in Britain, it came over as music, like it did for everybody." Oh, what do you hear first, rap? But when you dig deeper, no, there's a hairstyle, there's a clothing style, there's a language style, there's a body of knowledge. That's a little different. Moving on, so the hip hop scenario. The hip hop, the 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 hip hop dictionary, the dictionary of hip hop terminology by Alonzo Westbrook, 
lists hip hop as the artistic response to oppression, a way of expression in dance song, uh, dance or music and word song, a culture that, that thrives on creativity and nostalgia, a musical art form in the stories of inner city life, often with a message spoken over beats of music. Notice how the Oxford English and hip hop dictionary both say hip hop comes with a message. And keep in mind, all of hip hop don't come with a message. But when you look at hip hop overall as a culture, it's a politically motivated culture with a message. That's how scholars are looking at it. That's what they know it to be. They're not watching videos and seeing bitches and hoes and saying, oh, this is, we're going to now teach you hip hop based on hoes on the TV or these gangsters, the fake gangsters on the TV. We're going to teach you hip hop based on that. No, these people are studying what it is and they know how to study. That's why we go over to the scholars of other disciplines and say, what do you think about hip hop? Where do you see it? I may not agree, but I know you study this. So what do I look like to you? As a musical art form, it is the stories of inner city life, often spoken, often with a message spoken over beats of music. The culture includes rap. <coughs> Excuse me. The culture includes rap and any other venture spawned from the hip hop style and culture. You get that? This is the last, this is the hip hop scenario speaking. The culture includes rap. That's accurate. That's the accurate look at our culture. The culture includes rap and any other venture spawned from the hip hop style and culture. Any other venture spawned from the style, our other ventures, our other elements are from the hip hop style and culture. <clears throat> Let me stop for a minute. Hold on. I'm right here. Moving on. The Encyclopedia of Rap and Hip Hop Culture by Yvonne Bino. And these books that I'm <clears throat> mentioning to you as well, try to get them. Credits, uh, uh, the Encyclopedia of Rap and Hip Hop Culture by Yvonne, Yvonne Bino credits DJ Lovebug Starsky with first using the term hip hop to describe the new music and subculture. Credit is also given to DJ Hollywood, Chief Rocker Busy B, as well as Keith Cowboy from The Furious Five. These people also popularized the term hip hop. Actually, Africa Bambada should be in this list too. The term hip hop appears in the English language around 1672, meaning <clears throat> the reduplication of hop, the hopping movement, moving with successive hops. And, and, and notice what I just said here. <clears throat> Notice what I just said here. The term hip hop appears, this is the etymology of hip hop. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the etymology of hip hop. The term hip hop appears in the English language around 1672, meaning the reduplication of hop, the hopping movement, moving with successive hops. One of the earliest phrases recorded in the English language regarding hip hop was by the second Duke of Buckingham, George Villers, or Villers, but Villers. As part of a play around the same year, 1672, <clears throat> as he was being dismissed from the ministry of Charles II for misconduct, he is said to have stated in this play, to go, quote, to go off hip hop, hip hop upon this occasion is a thousand times better than any conclusion in the world. I gad, end quote. This, this last part, I gad, means to go from one place to another, to wander from here to there with no particular aim. So what, what he's saying is like he, he was getting kicked out for, for, kicked out of parliament, kicked out the government for corruption. 
And he's saying, this is the best thing that could have ever happened to me. To go off hip hop, hip hop upon this occasion is a thousand times better than <clears throat> any conclusion in the world. I gad. And he said, I go off now in my own way. <clears throat> Got wandering. Even though hip hop is not thought of as an individual person, place, or physical thing, it is still the name of our culture and community. Outside of music and entertainment, hip hop itself is the name of our collective consciousness. It is an idea that we hip hoppers share. It, hip hop, is the name of our identity in, in, in world history and in, in world culture. But hip hop is the name of our identity in world history. It, hip hop, exists. And it exists as a specific thing and as a specific group of people. Therefore, as a proper noun, hip hop is, is the name of our unique group of individuals that express themselves through breaking and seeing graffiti art, DJ, beatboxing, street fashion, street language, street knowledge, and street entrepreneurialism. We can all see that when people hear the term hip hop, they don't think of other things or people, they think of us. Good or bad, happy or sad, liked <clears throat> or disliked, loved or hated, they think of us. Rappers, breakdancers, graffiti writers, DJs. This makes hip-hop a specific thing in the world and the name of our specific culture. For these reasons, we spell hip-hop with capital H's as a proper noun. Unless the term hip hop is being displayed in an art presentation or if, or, or if translated into another language or culture where the grammatical rules of the English language do not apply or you are writing specifically about rap music <clears throat> and its related activities, hip hop should be spelled beginning with capital H, a capital H, lowercase IP space, capital H lowercase op hip-hop spelled correctly here with two uppercase h's is called the proper spelling of hip-hop hip-hop spelled in lowercase as hip-hop lowercase h i p space or dash lowercase h o p is called the phonetic spelling of hip-hop it is pronounced with alterations of of lighter and heavier vowels drip drop tip top Flip-flop, hip-hop. Again, hip-hop spelled in lowercase, hip-hop, lowercase h-i-p, h-o-p, refers to rap music entertainment and its related events. Hip-hop in lowercase is also how you say hip-hop. If, if you're spelling hip-hop phonetically, you can spell it in lowercase. The word hip in hip-hop means keenly aware Did you hear that? The word hip in hip hop means keenly aware to have knowledge of, to be informed, and to be up to date, even in style and fashionable. Hip, in a social sense, can mean keenly aware of what is new and in style. But the word hip, as it relates to hip hop, begins as the ancient African hippie, H-I-P-I. -I. This is a real word meaning to know or to be aware, as well as to open one's eyes, which in Africa becomes the common hip, meaning aware. Did you hear this? The word hip is an African word. You, you can't make this up. Just speaking the word hip hop, you connect yourself to Africa. Let me read further for you. The word hip, as it relates to hip hop, begins as the ancient African, hippie, H-I-P-I, meaning to know or to be aware, as well as to open one's eyes, which in Africa becomes the common hip, meaning aware. With hippie and hip, meaning aware and awareness, and kat, another African word, kat, C-A-T, meaning person, and, and get this, kat is another African word spoken before we got here to the United States. We would call it, we would say hip kat. 
And it's and cut is spelled K-A-T, like cat. Yo, you see these cats over here? Yo, this cat right here, that's a cool cat, man. We are already speaking the culture, ancient culture, but just don't know. It's coming through this English thing, so we don't really see it. But when you study hip hop for real, you begin to see your connection back to Africa just in terms of your speech. Hip, <clears throat> okay, hip was referred to the hippicot. The hippicot. And imagine we're calling ourselves cot and hippie long before we get to the United States. So, with hippie and hip, meaning aware and awareness, and cot, C-A-T, meaning person, hippie becomes hippicot, meaning one who is attuned to one's environment or one whose eyes are open. This word, hippicot, also believed to have been spoken by the Wolof people of West Africa, which is interesting because that's where African Americans are supposed to have embarked from to, 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 from Africa to get to America. We're supposed to embark from West Africa. Spoken by the Wolof people of West Africa was then popularized through jazz culture as Hepcat and later as Hip and as Hep, both meaning keenly aware and in style, these words these words transferred over um, during World War One and Two, where Africans in Africa were bringing these words over. They were mingling African Americans and Africans, French Africans, African Americans. We were all mingling and getting these words from each other. Even in Africa, the word hip, the word hep. Um, the word jazz, uh, cot, all of this is coming from Africa and African Americans from World War I and II are adopting this and bringing it into the, into the, into the black vernacular English of the day. <clears throat> this word hippicat, hippicot, also believed to have been spoken by the Wolof people of West Africa was then popularized through jazz culture as hepcat, and later as hip and as hep, both meaning keenly aware and in style. <clears throat> From the early 1700s onward, hip meant being informed or aware about something or someone. I'm hip to this, or I'm hip to that, or like when it was said by the Watts poets, the last poets hipping many cats, end quote. Hip is a form of awareness, a knowing. It is to be conscious and intelligent. Again, it is being keenly aware. That's what it means to be hip. To be keenly aware. Not just aware, but keenly aware. The word keen means a sharp, fine, cutting edge or point. When applied to thinking, <clears throat> it means having or marked by intellectual quickness and acuity. It means to be acutely sensitive. Here, we can see that hip-hop is a mental ability. You don't handle hip-hop with your hands. You first handle hip-hop with your mind. I hope you're getting this. You don't handle hip-hop with your hands. You first handle hip-hop with your mind. Our keenly aware hip-hop style of knowing is far more powerful and effective than anything we have ever been taught in public school. Hip hop itself is education. Such knowing is not necessarily an educated style of knowing, but more of an intuit knowing. It is the ability to know without being taught, to understand automatically. Such knowing is part of your genetic memory. It is part of the abilities you were born with. In fact, the phrase keenly aware points directly to the character of the hip-hop mind. Keenly aware. This is the mind you have. If you are a hip-hopper, you have a keenly aware mind. Your culture confirms this for you in its very name. In his book, Hip, the History, the History, <laughs> that's the name of his book, Hip, the History, John Leland writes, quote, 
Clarence Major, in his study, Juba to Jive, a dictionary of African-American slang, traces the origins of hip to the Wolof verb hepi, meaning to see, or hippie, meaning to open one's eyes, and dates its usage in America to the 1700s. So from the linguistic start, hip is a term of enlightenment cultivated by slaves from the West, the West African nations of Senegal and coastal Gambia. Did you, let me read this one more time, okay? This is John Leland, okay, writing. He wrote a whole book on hip, just the word hip, whole book on it. He says, he says, so from the linguistic start, not, not MTV start, not BET start, not a radio station start, not an entertainment start, from the linguistic start. Hip is a term of enlightenment. Hip is a term of enlightenment. Hip is a term of enlightenment. Okay, no way around it. It's a term of enlightenment. Where did this enlightenment come from? A term of enlightenment cultivated by slaves from the West Coast nations of Senegal and coastal Gambia. Your ancestors, if you're black, if you're African-American, your ancestors gave you hip hop long before. It's in us. Look at this. You cannot deny. You cannot deny. Hip hop is an ancient way to be. And it starts off with the word hip. These are all coincidences, I guess, right? Lovebug Starsky, who knew none of this, would just start saying hip hop, you don't stop. He felt it. It was feeling good to him to say hip. He didn't do all this research. He just said it. His genetic memory automatically told him where, who he was and what he was in one word, hip. Let's just study hip. Oh, hip, H-I-P. Hip, first word, it's a term of enlightenment. It comes from your ancestors, if you're African-American. comes from your, if you're African, period. If you come out of that continent, this is coming from your ancestors. Or more specifically, if you're African-American. Because again, the West Coast of Africa, that's not the East Coast where Ethiopia is, North where Egypt is, South Africa. That's not that. This is Gambia and co coastal Gambia and Senegal. These places have been robbed, raped, they're, they're crazy, the history of these places. But that's where we're supposed to come from, the African-Americans that would make hip-hop. That's where we're supposed to come from. You find that a coincidence? That the very word we're using with no research whatsoever would connect us back to the motherland and connect us back to our people. One word. Take that in. Let's move on. The word hop in hip hop means the action of hopping, a short springing or leaping upward, especially upon one foot. It means to move by leaps. Hop has also been associated with dancing as well as an informal non-ceremonial party or a jam, a dance. As said in the 1950s song by Danny and the Juniors, Let's go to the hop, oh baby, let's go to the hop, end quote. But generally, as it pertains to hip hop, hop means to move by leaps with both feet or by one foot as opposed to walking or running. That's what it means to hop. Together, hip as a form of awareness or intelligence and hop as a form of movement or springing upward when associated with hip hop literally means, did you, did you hear my words? Literally means intelligent hip movement, hop. Hip hop literally means intelligence moving, consciousness springing up or a movement aware of itself. Consciousness or intelligence awareness hip 
springing forward, leaping up, hop. The very name hip hop factually points to a movement aware of itself, a hip hop, a hop or movement aware of itself. This is culture. Not only does the very name of hip hop reveal hip hop itself to be self-aware, but now the hip hopper is also the consciousness that is moving. The awareness of the movement itself is us. We are the consciousness that's moving. The hip hopper or the hip hopper is the hip, the knower, the being, the awareness, hopping, moving, leaping up and springing forward. Here, we can begin to see real hip-hop emerging as a form of enlightenment, <clears throat> as a form of self-awareness, <clears throat> as a self-aware way to be where the attuned hip-hopper declares, I am hip to my hop. I know why I move. External stimuli do not move me. My senses do not move me either anymore. I move me now. I am hip to my hop. I know why I move. My principles move me. My divine character moves me. My ancestors move me. I am more than just me. I am a continuation of my culture. I am hip to my cultural hop, to my cultural movement. I know why we move. This now moves us on to our subjective understanding of hip hop, hip awareness, hop moving. What more are we than awareness moving, consciousness in motion, thought in action? Before any title or name, before woman, man, girl, boy, daughter, son, wife, husband, aunt, uncle, mother, father, and so any title, before any title, even before your own name, you are actually and factually intelligence or consciousness moving. You are hip to your moving, hop. This is where we start our teaching and ourselves as simply intelligent beings. Like imagine a culture that recognizes itself not on race, but the fact that we are all intelligent beings and we're moving. That's how I see you, that's how you see me. I don't identify you as black, or white, or red, or brown, or yellow. I identify you as an intelligent being, moving. This is where we start our teaching and, our, and ourselves. We start the teaching like this, and we start ourselves as a culture like this. As simply intelligent beings. Moving, leaping, and springing forward, we are a specific group of hips hopping. Beyond anyone's opinion about rap music or rappers, this is what the word hip hop factually and literally means. And this is how the true hip hop scholar or teacher approaches the learning as well as the teaching of hip hop. For us, hip hoppers, hip hop is a creative environment that transforms subject and subjects and objects to meet our needs. This creative environment or activity, hip hopia, is a reality maker that one becomes in order to fully understand and make use of. Now I'm gonna stop right here because the rest of this gets into secret knowledge. And those of you that will come to us uh, during Hip Hop Appreciation Week, you will get some of that knowledge. You will get some of that knowledge. Uh, and 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 I'm gonna stop right there um, uh, on on this part here. Um, yep. And so this is where we're at. And you know what? Uh, let me say this because before I get into the secret knowledge. Yep. Yep. All right, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna end. I'm gonna end this read, but I'm gonna read two more pages, and then I have to stop because it does get to the secret knowledge at that point. And I have to teach you this face to face. This is not something <clears throat> to be put to put online. Um, but let me let me finish this out 
And you'll, and you'll also probably see why, because not many people are going to be able to comprehend what it is I'm about to teach you right now. Let me just go through it to put it into the record, but then I'll stop when it gets really thug. <laughs> For us, hip hoppers, hip hop is a creative environment that transforms subjects and objects to meet our needs. This creative environment or activity, hip hopia, is a reality maker that one becomes in order to fully understand and make use of. Hear my words now. We first saw this reality making ability studying the experiments of Grandmaster Flash, among others, that were able to transform certain subjects and or objects in an effort to physically manifest that which was only an idea a moment ago. As simple as this ability may seem to be, coming from my mouth, it is its application that is most astonishing. How Grandmaster Flash transformed the turntable from an appliance like a stove or a refrigerator or a blender into a musical instrument like a guitar or a saxophone or a drum is but one of the traits or principles, abilities of hip hop as consciousness. See, this is where, this is where I, I'm not putting this into the public. This part I, I can. Studying Grandmaster Flash's display of mind over matter, we see how because of Flash's ability to perceive outside of what was standard for turntables, mixes, and phonograph records at the time, he was able to repurpose them, transforming the use of them to fit his imagination, thus transforming their actual functions and definitions and uses in the whole of the American society. How did he do that? This ability to transform subjects and objects to perform according to one's own perception of them is one of the forgotten traits or abilities of hip hop. This ability is what really gave rise to, the se to several of hip hop's artistic and cultural innovations. The ability to rethink one's environment in an effort to transform it or escape it. The Gospel of Hip Hop at page 66, paragraph 42 reminds us, quote, for serious apprentices of the temple of hip hop, hip hop is a hip hop is a perceptual ability that transforms subjects and objects in an effort to express the character of one's inner being. Hip hop is the ability to make physical objects and social subjects perform according to your perception of them. End quote. Applied to oneself, hip hop transforms the attuned hip hopper into whatever such a hip hopper truly has the heart for. Once properly understood, it becomes clear that hip hop at this level is a reality maker. It is an ability of being, even a condition in nature, which assists intelligent beings in actually becoming the answers to the questions they may have or becoming the solution to the challenges that may threaten their survival and growth. And the key phrase to remember here is, is becoming the answers to the questions one may have and or becoming the actual solution yourself to the challenges you may be facing. The key word in these phrases is becoming. When It is when being comes. This is a natural ability of being. It is to become the answer. This is a forgotten part of nature's intelligence, which solves problems and meets challenges by adapting to them or transforming oneself beyond the challenge itself. This intelligence, nature's intelligence, is the same intelligence that decides that a turtle needs a shell, or bears need claws, or some snakes need venom, or certain insects need to blend in with their surroundings. The intelligence in nature that heals. You ever get cut and something other than yourself puts yourself back together? You ever think about who's doing that? Or what does that? The, the intelligence in nature that heals and puts everything back together in the way in which nature intended it. This natural intelligence that adapts to challenges through direct transformation of either the challenge or oneself. This is the principle by which hip hop as culture emerges. 
being hip to one's hop, knowing why we were moving like we were moving, moving deliberately and naturally, even unconsciously, according to our, to our innate hip hop awareness and not according to the environment presented to us in the 1970s and 80s, this is what saved us. Are you stronger than the environment? Does the environment move you or do you move the environment? This is the key to the teaching of hip hop. This is what freed us from the oppression and blatant injustice we were facing every day, all day, everywhere in New York during these times. We simply became the answers to the challenges we faced. We realized that in the face of blatant injustice, that if, that if you can become anything that you need to become to defeat or escape such injustices, then such injustices are not injustices at all. Such injustices become the springboards by which you catapult your real being into existence. Adversity, hard times, and disappointments, they all vanish when you can simply become the answers you need. This is what real hip-hop did for us. In the face of blatant injustice and oppression, we simply became the answers we needed. We were not given the answers. We became the answers. We became the B-boys and B-girls. We became the MCs, the DJs, the graffiti writers, the beatboxers, and so on. Nothing, nothing and no one came to us. It was we that came to us. We came to us. Our being came to us, even through us. In truth, it was our being that came or became to us. <laughs> our being came to us. We, the being, came with the solutions we needed for ourselves. Our being came as the solution. Do you understand that? This is why this part, and it gets deeper now, but I'm getting ready to close up. This is the piece right here, if you can comprehend. Your being being the answer. Through our own self-expressions, breaking and seeing graffiti writing, DJing and beatboxing, we became the people we needed to be in order to escape and live outside of the oppression we were facing. This was the answer to oppression. To become the answer against it. This was an act of being. This was an act of being hip to our hop or taking control as to how we were going to move in our own minds. Not move the body, that's not hip hop. How we were going to move our mind, what we were going to believe, what we were going to accept as true, what we were going to determine was valuable and important, movement of mind. Faced with an unjust situation that appeared to offer no way out, we simply transformed ourselves. When we transformed what we thought of ourselves, the unjust situations no longer affected us in the horrible ways that it did. Our inner view of ourselves transformed our run-down and burnt-out outer neighborhoods into endless streams of new ideas. The Bronx in the 1970s and 80s, as just one example, was a hopeless, horribly corrupt and poverty-stricken environment. But those of us living in the Bronx, enlightened by our hip-hop awareness, began to look at the Bronx not according to how it actually was or how it was presented to us, but how we saw ourselves within it. Even though the Bronx in the 1970s and 80s was a hopeless situation for young people at the time, it was our hip-hop awareness that wrote songs about it. We wrote on the walls. We wrote on the trains. We displayed the art that we were being denied into the environment itself. We wrote on garbage. We wrote on broken buildings. We wrote on, on broken down trains and dirty trains. We wrote on this and then spit our knowledge. We had boom boxes in the neighborhood. We just infiltrated the society in which we were in. And this saved us. This is what, this is what saved us. These acts, okay, uh, uh, these acts, however, transforming stuff based on who you think you are in the environment. These acts, however, made us popular and what? 
valuable. This is the first lesson in hip hop. How does hip hop has become valuable? How do we become empowered? These acts, however, made us popular and valuable and then rich and globally famous. But it all began with how we viewed ourselves. The South Bronx nor the West Bronx changed to this day. Still the Bronx. <laughs> Big up to the Bronx. It's still Bronx. Okay. Uh, um, uh, let me read that again. The South Bronx nor the West Bronx changed. It was we that changed. This is something that we might want to, we might need to think about this today, facing with the challenges that, 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 that we are facing today. This transformative attitude about ourselves, the tra this transformative attitude about ourselves was the beginning of a new self. This is the attitude, this this attitude about ourselves, th it was this attitude that became our arts, our dances, our, and our view of reality, our world view. From nothing to something, we created hip hop. We created our hip hop reality with our very being. And here's, here's the key part. Here's the key part. We believed ourselves into existence. That's the key piece. We believed ourselves into existence. We were faced with problems and challenges, but we didn't change the problem or the challenge. We changed ourselves in the face of it. We became the answer to the challenge. That's why you have B-boys, MCs, graffiti writers, DJs, and so on, because these are the answers to oppression. When you try to stomp out somebody's voice, what do you need? An MC. <laughs> when somebody's keeping you out of the music business or out of the entertainment, keeping you out of all industries, but allowing you to be an entertainer and then even keeping you out of that, what's the answer? I'm a DJ. We're going to cut, we're going to create an entirely different way to present music. Now, your way is obsolete. Learn these lessons. These are the strategies against oppression, against injustice. Hip hop is not music. It's a response against oppression. And so, and it's, that's not even all it is. That's not what it is because even before oppression, hip hop existed. So we're not reactionary to oppression only. But when oppression hit this ancient culture, this ancient way of being, what did this ancient way of being do? It said, okay, cool. You trying to stop my voice? MC. Now the whole world wants this and don't even want to hear your voice. You trying to stop me from being in the music industry so my voice and my music can be heard? I'm going to become the DJ that plays everybody's music and I'm going to manipulate the turntable in such a way that your way is going to be obsolete. Obsolete. I don't have to fight you. I'm better than you. Period. And hip hop has to make these distinctions. You have to think of yourself in this way. Not on no bragging, not on no grandizement and all of that, but you did create a new way to present music to the world. That's your culture that did that. Grandmaster Flash did it. He said, I gave it freely to hip hop. All hip hoppers have this. We share this culture. We share that achievement. All of us, we share that achievement. Don't let that, these are the facts of your culture. Don't just let somebody woof you down and tell you your culture ain't shit. That don't mean nothing. That's just hip hop. Nah, this is the greatest urban culture of the 20th and 21st centuries. Rock that for a minute. The greatest, the world has never seen nothing like this. All you have, but it was called ancient Egypt. It was called Timbuktu. It was called Atlantis. That's the last time the world seen something like hip hop. Global culture. That these other governments are trying to use military means. And imagine Russia is spending billions a day to invade Ukraine. And hip hop already invaded Ukraine and Russia. No gunshot, no bomb, no nothing. The Russian people want hip hop. The Ukrainian people want hip hop. And we're a culture, we're a foreign culture. This is imperialism, welcomed, <laughs> welcomed imperialism. When all these governments are fighting to get people to do by force, 
Hip hop is doing naturally. That's why I said we are the true world order. The true world, not a new world order. We are the true world order. The two, the one, two, true world order, two. That's who hip hop is. That's what hip hop is. There's a, there's a global world order and then there's a true world order. How everybody really acts and how everybody really gets down in urban areas. There's only one order in the world and it's hip hop. And we need to start functioning like that and realize the responsibilities that come with that kind of uh, global power. We can't just shirk, we can't act childish with that kind of global power. We got to bring peace to the world. We got to bring prosperity and healing to the world. Simone talked about mercy on Monday. We got to bring mercy and forgiveness to the world. That's what we as hip hop can do. As a united culture, we can put an end to crime. A lot of us are the ones doing the crimes. We can put an end to that with a higher mind, with a higher consciousness united around what we know to be true. Hip means awareness, knowledge, not even knowledge, intelligence, consciousness, and awareness. That's hip. Hop, springing up, leaping forward. What is hip hop? Hip, intelligence, hop, leaping forward. That's what we are, y'all. That's what it is. Now, when you are that, you become a master teacher like the one you're looking at right now. I just spoke about hip hop, special lecture. That's what that was. But now, I'm going to go and blaze right now. Um... I'm going to go and, um, to the studio real quick and get it popping. And um, like I said, like I said, you know, Sun One and them, they, 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 they actually there. I think, I think they already there, um, you know, which is why, um, you know, we doing this right here like this. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go, y'all. Uh, this is the Temple of Hip Hop. I want to thank you all for being here, and I mean that. Uh, feel the love and feel the care in my own voice. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a Temple member. Those who are coming this week, welcome to Hip Hop Appreciation Week. We're going to be doing heavy learning, heavy learning uh, during the entire week. Welcome to Hip Hop Appreciation Week. Enjoy New York City. We have time to run around New York as well. Run over to Brooklyn, see some sights and sounds. It's going to be raw. What I'm about to do now, like I said, is I'm going to dash over to the studio uh, and just spit some rhymes, about 20 minutes or so. Uh, I'm just going to spit some rhymes um, and celebrate the week. Just something to celebrate the week, bring some, some excitement to the week. Um, I'm spitting the raw gutter, as you know, uh, but of course that conscious, as you also know. So I'm going to get ready to go, and I'm going to go do my thing. And um, I'll see you guys over there, KRS-One, all day and night. This is how we doing it. Peace to the gods, peace to the goddesses, we out. Arrive at 1520 Sedgwick Avenue. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Back in the time. Back in the time. Back in the time. Back in 73, in the borough of Bronx. Man, you couldn't be weak. Man, you had to be smart. See, we talking about streets. Now we talking about art. When we talking about beats, man, we talking about heart. We was rocking the heart beat. Live in the park, gun spark in the dark. It was all just a part of the 80s Bronx scene that created art. How you know, KRS? Cause I was there from the start. 1600 Cedric Avenue, that was the spot. 1520, hip hop started right on my block. This original hip hop, whether you like it or not. I'm reminding through this rhyming cause you might have forgot. Drop on the spot, B boy, start pop. Live on the block, this is raw hip. Hop, drop on the spot, grab righties, don't stop Bottom to the top, this is raw hip Hop, drop on the spot, MCs make it hot Microphone rock, this is raw hip Hop, drop on the spot, DJs on the chop Cut, mix, scratch, this is raw See, when we would begin, they brought the heroin in They was really determined that we was never gonna win But by looking within, we began to believe That we was breakers and writers, DJs and MCs We was so damn poor, we was eating free cheese But that made us raw, we started eating MCs Just before the feeds and the MTVs When you walked in New York and you
your ears would freeze while a beats and leaks mock necks and tees nylon bvds we was fucking with these we was fucking with this we was fucking with that but when the 80s came in we started fucking with crack and along with the crack came a big old gap and along with the gap came a big old stack because if you ain't had that you was the next to get jacked this the way that it was i'm just taking it back drop on the spot b-boy start pop live on the block this is raw hip Hop, drop on the spot, grab righties, don't stop Bottom to the top, this is raw hip Hop, drop on the spot, MCs make it hot Microphone rock, this is raw hip Hop, drop on the spot, DJs on the chop Cut, mix, scratch, this is raw This the way that it was, this the way that it went Man, you had to survive, card note with the rent When the 90s arrived, 80s money was spent All them dudes who was live, to the prison they went And them dudes who survived, they began to repent Then they realized in rap, there was money to get So gangsters became rappers, rappers became gangsters Fake became the real for the paper Third week of May goes down this way. Hey yo, raise the reverb up a little bit. Yo, now that you notice the mic that I'm holding, ain't nobody fucking with me. We take them and break them and God is forsaking them, sending them over to me. You think I'll be kitting your skull, I'll be splitting with what I am spitting for free. It's hip hop appreciation week, now check the way I speak, now listen to me. Africa, that's who we are, steering the car, raising the bar. You gotta know just who you are, wherever you go, wherever you are. You are the one, you are the star. Open your mind, you will go far, bringing the beast, bringing the roar. Ripping every heart of every DJ that be selling out They never play the conscious rap, but culture them be yelling out The frauds and fakers, cultural traders, yes we got to get them out Push your hands up right now if you not the one that's selling out Knowledge brings the heavens out, ignorance what hell about KRS the culture, keep a Garvey out forever shout But we going deeper now, deeper with the teacher now Deeper with your speaker, with the woofer and the tweeter now Deep into Jamaica with the sound Against the slaver with the rumble of the baser Brings up ancestral behavior Remember what they gave you To defend against the slaver Copper word a naya bingy The drummer and the baser Black people this was illegal Even the church they said it was evil Look at they treat you, look at they treat us Never the truth, they only deceive us Time to believe us and perceive us And to the nation that can relieve us And then retrieve us from all the fevers And non-believers, they can just leave us I come to bring your focus back Open your eye, do not let the devil hold you back Whenever you train, you can get right back on track Knowledge man is supreme, how dope is that? Yo, now that you know that the mic that I'm holding ain't nobody fucking with me We take them and break them and God is forsaking them, sending them over to me You think I be getting your skull, I be splitting with what I'm spitting for free? It's hip hop appreciation week, now check the way I speak, now listen to me This is the teacher, only your speaker, blow in the ether You know the teacher, lyrical leader, you already know, they already weaker KRS-One, I'm stronger and deeper, culture keeper, grim reaper Up in the morning, rhymes on the cranium Awaken them, from clubs to stadiums I'm stating them, the life of an MC Crowds we be facing them My pen sells lead, rappers I'm erasing them They tremble with the treble, my level puts the bass in them Metal for these devils, don't settle for any place with them Divine speaking of rhyme leader, my words chasing them I sense the faking them, when I rock steady I'm breaking them Boom, back tracks, info black keeps making them Kick to the bass, bass to the snare, reawaken them Cracking them, over roasting them, baking them, taking them Earthquaking them, shaking them I'm early, never late with them They hopeless, they not focused So they not the dopest They the brokers, hopelessly devoted to hocus pocus Hoping nobody notice They style is bogus and quoteless Why KRS ain't a drug dealer But here's what dope is I don't front, I'm throwing these rappers in the background Original boom, back rap I rap that sound And why? I'm from that town That's where the kings have learned That heavy is the head that wears that crown I don't back down Hip-hop, I am that now You icy ringling brothers You look like that Blood diamonds are still around, black hands are still being cut off You just don't hear the sound I get down, but I'm not ducking, I'm bucking Like
like Dougie Fresh said, I tell you now, you ain't nothing. I get to cut and scratch your face quick. I'm breaking your MC and with graffiti lines. Back to the basics, meaning the bass is sick. So I'm back to being basic. That basic ancient naked ape shit. Free from enslavement, you never made it if you didn't create it. Stop and rewind what I just stated. You never really made it if you didn't create it. You just a copy of a copy that's been imitated. It's the original that rhymes today. Criminal minded from back in the day. Spiritual minded, I shoot my P Ray. You in the E R P Ray E R. You don't know who we are. This is the T Char. I get surgical with these bars. They steal and I'm healing. So in front of my name, you can put the D R. I'm all about this hip hop nation. But come on, y'all, look at what we're facing. Peep the situation. It's the role of every generation to maintain control of what they making. Because what we making, that's the legacy of our nation. I'm talking about the time that we wasted, bickering and hating, faking and debating why these capitalists taking everything that we created. These are not the characteristics that build nations. These characteristics further the exploitation. It's about our unity and cultural education. It's all about community. Community, hugging, loving, embracing. But if your mind is small, if your mind's been taken, you can't even see what I'm saying or really stating. Who is really curious, serious about our nation? Stand up, man, a woman up to the situation. <laughs>